Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this lesson, we're going to be analyzing a wind turbine blade. Now this is a little more complicated than most of the things we usually look at. And essentially the reason for this is the fact that the entire thing is rotating. Now the end result of this rotation is a very different airfoil profile as we move up along with a huge amount of twist as we get toward the tip. In order to understand why this design makes sense, let's look at a single airfoil profile. In order to generate energy, we need to have some amount of wind coming in. We're gonna call that U infinity. So I'm going to create a UZ vector pointing into the wind, UR along the blade, and U theta, which is going to be in the direction of rotation. So moving over to our sectional airfoil, we have some U infinity coming in. This is in the negative UZ direction. Our airfoil is going to be moving in the U theta direction. And its speed is going to be omega times R, where R is just the distance from the center of the hub. Now this is a little difficult to analyze because we usually don't work on airfoils that move. We tend to work in the reference frame of the airfoil. So I'm going to redraw this and treat this omega r as an additional velocity that our airfoil is seeing. We still have our u infinity coming in, but now we have this omega r downward, and I'm going to call this a v infinity. And these two velocities together, we're going to name w infinity. Now we're interested in the force that this w infinity creates on our airfoil. So we're going to have lift and drag. Our lift is going to be perpendicular to W infinity, whereas our drag is going to be parallel to it. And I'm going to use, call these L prime and D prime because these are sectional values, values per unit span. These are going to form an angle with the horizontal and vertical axes, which is the same as the angle of this W. And I'm going to call that angle gamma. Now, in order to actually calculate the value of L prime and D prime, we need to know the angle of attack of the airfoil with respect to the oncoming flow. And I'm going to say that this chord line is at an angle beta to the horizontal. And that means that alpha, which can be drawn here, is simply equal to beta minus gamma. Now, whenever we're designing a wind turbine blade, we're thinking about how much moment the force on the wing is actually generating. Now, the lift isn't in the proper direction to generate moment. We're actually interested in the force in the theta direction. And I'm still going to use this prime to denote that this is the force per unit span. And this is going to be equal to the lift multiplied by the cosine of gamma. But the drag actually plays a role as well. So that's going to be minus the drag multiplied by sine of gamma. Now, while this is generating some force in the theta direction due to the lift, it's also generating some force in the z direction. The force in the z direction is going to be minus L prime times sine of gamma minus D prime times cosine of gamma. Remember that z is facing upstream. And we get our moment from this F in the theta direction. We can just say that our moment, again, per unit span, is going to be equal to r, our moment's arm, multiplied by the force in the theta direction. All right, we're basically at a point where we can start thinking about analyzing the entire wing. So let's choose a design point. We need to choose some oncoming velocity. I'm gonna say that this is eight meters per second. We need to choose an omega, and this is gonna be pi over four radians per second. We also need to choose a size of our wind turbine. So I'm going to say that the maximum radius is going to be 80 meters. So this thing is massive, it's turning slowly, and it only has a little bit of wind to get power from. I'm going to say that our target power is going to be 5 megawatts. Not saying we're going to get there this time, but this is what we're aiming for. And then we're going to have to choose some values for our airfoils that we're using. Let's just say right now, that we're gonna choose alpha so that lift over drag is maximum. The reason we're choosing this is because our lift is contributing to our moment, whereas our drag is actually taking away from it. 
A good starting point is to say that we want our L prime to be as large as possible and our D prime to be as small as possible. Next, we need to choose some airfoil. And I'm not going to choose a specific one, but we are going to say that the CL at L over D max is going to be equal to 1.2 and CD is equal to 0.08. We've specified our alpha. And the way this translates into our actual twist angle is by solving for beta from this equation, which very simply is just beta is equal to alpha plus gamma. So this gamma is changing based on how far up we are on our blade. Alpha is remaining constant based on this L over D max, or it's changing a little bit based on what airfoil section we're seeing. But regardless, if we have all the information we need, we should know this. And then this beta will be the twist angle of the airfoil. So let's choose a specific section, which means a specific radius, and analyze that. So our radius that we choose is going to be 20 meters out from the hub. Our V infinity is going to be omega times R, and that's going to end up being 5 pi meters per second, which is right around 15.7 meters per second. Our U doesn't change, that's just going to be 8 meters per second. But then we can calculate our W infinity using Pythagoras, and we end up with 17.62 meters per second. All right, at this point, we can calculate gamma, and I'm going to say that's equal to the arctangent of V divided by U. And that ends up being right at 63 degrees. So now we can calculate L prime, and this is one half rho w infinity squared multiplied by our section lift coefficient multiplied by the chord. So we're going to have to assume a chord length here as well, and this will be one of our design points. I'm just going to set it to one meter for now, and we can go back and play around with that later. I'm going to say that rho is equal to 1.2 kilograms per meters cubed, which is about right. Plugging everything in, we end up with 223.5 newtons per meter. We can do the same thing with drag, and we end up with 14.9 newtons per meter. Now that we have lift and drag, we can plug this into our F theta and Fz equations. For F theta, we end up with 88.2 newtons per meter, and for Fz, we end up with 205.9 newtons per meter. And using our F theta, we can come up with a moment per unit span as well. So that's just 20 meters multiplied by 88, which comes out to 1,764 newton meters per meter. And we could simplify that to newtons. This helps us keep track of what the units actually mean. This is not enough to calculate the power, which is what we're aiming for. So the next step is to calculate this for a number of other radius positions and then integrate. Now we could probably go through the work and actually calculate an equation as a function of r, but honestly it's just a lot simpler and not that inaccurate to find a couple of values and integrate this uh, using numerics. So we're going to be choosing a number of values. I'm just going to choose four here, 20, 40, 60, and 80 and calculate the moments at each of these points. Now, we do have to choose a chord length for each of those points, but for this analysis, I'm just going to set that equal to 1, and we'll move on. After we go through all of the math, we end up with four points, which end up looking something like this. And we want to find the area underneath this curve. The x-axis is r, of course, in meters, and the y-axis is our moment, and this is in newton meters per meter. And so the area under the curve will end up with newton meters per meter multiplied by meter, which leaves us with newton meters. All right, the way we're going to solve this is through the trapezoidal rule. So the trapezoidal rule says that the total moment is going to be equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 all the way to n of 1 half m i prime plus m i plus 1 prime times the delta r. Actually, this should be n minus 1. We're going to call the point here m1. This is going to be m2, m3, and so on. 
So the area of this first trapezoid is just going to be m1 plus m2 divided by 2 times 20 meters. Area of the second, the average of these two multiplied by 20 meters, and so on and so forth. Now, what we end up with after integrating is the moment caused by one blade. And this turns out to be 485.3 kilonewton meters. So the moment of three blades is 1.46 meganewton meters. All right, so how close are we? We can calculate the moment we need from the equation that power is equal to moment multiplied by omega. This means that our moment is simply our power divided by omega, which turns out to be 20 divided by pi mega newton meters. Now this value happens to be right around 6.37 mega newton meters. So based on our current analysis, we're off by about a factor of four. In order to make this work, we're going to have to choose some different design points. So this could be a different CL that we're choosing, which would be either a different airfoil or a different angle of attack. We could change our cord length along the airfoil, maybe increasing some of these at the beginning. We could increase our omega, which would decrease our required moment. Or maybe we have to go back and actually change our radius. Now our goal here is twofold. First off, we want to match our power requirements based on our design velocity. But on top of that, what we'd really like to do is minimize the force in the z direction. And the reason we want to minimize this is simply because all of this is cost. And it comes at the price of additional structural requirements. So we're going to have to go back and change u infinity, which we may not be able to do. This may just be what our environment demands of us. We can change omega which may be based off of our generator and gearbox. There may be some constraints there. We could possibly change our CL or our CD, and maybe we have a chance to actually change our maximum radius as well. And our goal here is to hit a target power and minimize our force in the Z. So good luck, and I hope this was helpful as you attempt to design a wind turbine blade.